Hello everyone. My name is Ajay. Depressurization is extremely important topic in oil and gas industry. So we are going to spend some time discussing depressurization. We are going to learn how to do the simulation using Aspen Hysis, using blowdown utility. So what is depressurization? So let us assume that we have this uh, pressure vessel. Let's say we have a, a separator, two phase. So we have got this inlet shut down wall and the vapor line shut down wall and then liquid line shut down wall. If I want to depressurize it, so what I'll do, I'll close all these uh, shut down walls and I'll have one line, depressurization line, which will be going to the flare or to the safe location or atmosphere if it is safe gas. And this line would have a BDV, blowdown wall, or EDP, EDPV, emergency depressuring wall, followed by one restriction orifice. So on PNID, this system would look something like this. So we have this uh, eight inch, okay, in this case it is eight inch, but it could be different line size also. So this line is the depressurization line. It goes to this uh, EDPV, emergency depressuring wall followed by the restriction orifice. Here the tag number is RO501. And then it will be sent to the flare header or it will be sent to the safe location, depending upon what is the content. So when we say we are going to do the depressurization study, so ultimately we are trying to find out what is the RO size, what is the restriction orifice size, and also the tailpipe size. Why we depressurize? Okay, there are three reasons. To reduce the risk of vessel or piping rupture due to thermal stress during a fire. To minimize the fuel inventory, which could supply a fire. And to minimize the release of flammable or toxic products in case of non-ignited loss of containment. So these three reasons are uh, pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. So I will not discuss much about it. All right, so there are uh, mainly two uh, scenarios that we consider for depressurization. First one is, of course, the fire case. Um, so what will be the initial pressure? Okay, that will be the PSV inlet, or sorry, PSV set pressure. And then what is the inlet temperature? So maximum operating temperature we consider. And then final pressure. So from PSV set pressure till the final pressure, we want to depressurize within 15 minutes. Okay, for the vessels which are having one inch or more uh, vessel thickness. And what will be the final pressure? It could be 50% of the design pressure for pool fire scenario or 6.9 bar gauge for jet fire scenario. Now these guidelines are taken from uh, ad hoc standard. There is another case, another scenario that is adiabatic. In this initial pressure, we have uh, we take PAHH. Initial temperature would be maximum operating temperature. Final pressure would be atmospheric pressure. And then depressurization time, unlike fire case, uh, we are not in a hurry. So until we get atmospheric pressure, uh, we can continue. So it could be a um, couple of hours also. So it's not a problem. In old API 521, I believe before fifth edition of API 521, the 50% slash 15 minutes rule was given as below. So it says that you, you have to depressurize the equipment to 6.9 bar gauge or 50% of the design pressure, whichever is lower, within 15 minutes or lower. Meaning if you have a... a uh, an equipment with say 24 bar gauge pressure. Okay, 24 bar gauge design pressure. So you have to depressurize it to 12 bar gauge or 6.9 bar gauge, whichever is minimum. So in this case, 6.9 is the minimum. So from 24 bar gauge, you need to depressurize to 6.9 bar gauge in 15 minutes or lower. So that was the criteria. 
it was given in old API. Also, this statement is common, old API, new API, depressuring to a gauge pressure of 690 kilopascal in 15 minutes is commonly considered when the depressuring system is designed to reduce the consequences from a vessel leak or failure. So this criteria is also commonly applied for both fire and leak scenarios, right? So whenever it is vessel leak or some failure is there, then 6.9 bar gauge, gauge pressure, final pressure. So that needs to be done within 15 minutes. Now the latest API, it doesn't talk about 6.9 bar gauge pressure. Okay, so so if your vessel's design pressure is say 24 bar gauge, okay, so you need to depressurize it to 12 bar gauge, 50% 50, 50 of design pressure in 15 minutes. So that is enough. You don't have to depressurize to 6.9 bar gauge pressure. So this is as per the latest API 521. Okay, and we need to follow that. For vessel leak or failure, so the 6.9 bar gauge, that is, that is still there. Okay, so that we need to follow. All right, so let us put some numbers. Let us solve an example. So it will be much clearer. So what we are going to do, we are going to study the fire scenario as per old API 521 criteria. So what is old API 521 criteria? You need to depressure as to 6.9 bar gauge or 50% of the design pressure, whichever is lower within 15 minutes or lower. Right. So let us do that. Um, so the system, what we have is, we have got this uh, two-phase separator. Uh, the inlet stream, stream number one, I'll open it. All right, so if you notice stream number one, the composition I have given propane, n-butane, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and then methane is 0 0.6. And uh, the pressure 60 bar gauge, okay, which is the design pressure of the equipment. And mass flow rate, I just put one. Okay, it doesn't matter. We just want the material stream to get converged. And vapor fraction is 0 0.5. Okay, so it will calculate T sat as something like 14.5 degrees C. Then we'll go to home, then we'll go to the blowdown and depressuring drop down box, then we'll we'll select blowdown. Right, then click start analysis. Okay, so once you do that, you're going to get this window. Okay, so this is blowdown analysis dash one. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to in design, you're going to make this inlet line till blowdown line horizontal section as zero. So we are only going to consider the volume occupied by this main vessel. Okay, we are not going to consider any piping volume to make things simpler for us. But we are going to consider a tailpipe. So we can keep tailpipe as one. Okay, so that is represented by this tailpipe boundary. Then go to a system. So now in your file, it will all be um, red. Okay, so what we need to do, go to template parameters, air temperature, air speed. Okay, you need to just follow that. I'm not going to read it out for you. Initial temperature, then initial pressure. So since it is fire case depressurization, we need to start with the design pressure or PSV set pressure. So in this case, say it is 60 bar gauge. And we're going to consider this fire case. So this fire zone, so this box should be checked. Then go to main vessel. So in main vessel, you need to select this link to stream. 
and then fine stream. So this will be the inlet. Okay, you need to expand this case, then select one, which is the inlet to the separator, then click OK. Then go to the fire zone vessel, main vessel in the geometry. So let it be a uh, vertical uh, vessel. Tan tan, its height would be say six meter, and then diameter is two meter. Cylinder wall thickness, I'm going to give 30 mm. Okay, I'm giving slightly uh, more than one inch. Head geometry disc, head wall thickness 30 mm. So the vessel volume is close to 20 meter cube. The next is initial condition. So I'm going to uh, put say 20% liquid level and then need to go to simple fire. Okay. So this vessel has got insulation. So the environment factor I'm going to consider say 0 0.3. Let us move ahead. So tail pipe. So I'm going to assume uh, this is going to be the pipe schedule 40 and the nominal diameter 100 mm. So it's a four inch line, length is 10 mm. Uh, sorry, 10 meter. Elevation change is zero. Then go to initial condition. So initial condition, temperature say 25 uh, degree C because when this EDPV or BDV is not open, so this tailpipe would be in contact or say in equilibrium with the ambient condition. So 25 degree C would be a good number for this because our ambient temperature we are taken as 25 degree C. And then pressure. So this is the superimposed uh, back pressure. Okay, this is the um, maximum pressure that the flare header would have. So let us assume that it is 1.5 bar gauge. Then go to orifice. So our line tailpipe is uh, four inch, 100 mm. I consider um, considered this orifice, restriction orifice size as 25 mm with discharge coefficient 0 0.6. All right, next is we need to go to um, run control. So as per 50% slash 15 minutes rule, um, this time we're going to consider 900 seconds or 15 minutes. And then final pressure is going to be 6.9 bar gauge. So any of these two criteria are satisfied, the simulation is going to halt. It is going to stop, right? So once you click run blow down, Okay, it says blow down run completed without any error. We need to go to result summary, major findings. So how much time it has taken? Blow down run ended at 7.57 seconds. And then final pressure was 6.92, which is pretty really close to 6.9 bar gauge. Um, let us check that with our PPT. Yeah. So initial pressure we are taken correct, 60 bar gauge. Design pressure is 60 bar gauge. Vessel dimension that we are taken two meter diameter and six meter height. MD empty. So the criteria is whatever is the inlet or inner wall temperature minus three degrees C would be MD empty, minimum design metal temperature. Um, so in our case, this tailpipe minimum wall temperature is minus 31. So minus 31 minus three. Okay, we can consider that as minus 33 or 34, minus 34. Yeah, minus 34 degrees C. So one constraint is given because let us say this is existing facility and we are putting our new vessel with new uh, EDPV or BDV. And the existing flare header cannot handle any additional flow rate exceeding 5,000 kg per hour. So we don't want to see the flow rate, maximum flow rate more than 5,000. But in this case, it is 13,140. 13, so it is exceeding too much. Okay, let us review the results of this particular case. So final pressure is 6.9, that is okay. Depressuring time 
757 seconds it should be less than 900 so this criteria is satisfied we have taken ro size 25 mm tailpipe size 100 mm mdmt minus 31 is the minimum wall temperature for the tailpipe and minus 3 so it will be minus 34 degrees it would be mdmt this is the temperature you need to report to your piping engineer so that he or she will uh, select appropriate piping MOC for the tailpipe. So in this case, mostly it will be LTCS, low, temper uh, low temperature uh, carbon steel pipe. Right. So here the flow rate is on higher side, 13,000 uh, something. So how to reduce it? So if you try to reduce the RO size, so obviously the flow rate would reduce. But the depressuring time would increase. Yes, already it is close to uh, you know 750. So we don't really have much margin because we want to reduce from 13,000 till 5,000. Right? So now let us talk about a new API criteria for depressurization. Now in this case, we don't have to depressurize this to 6.9 bar gauge. The final pressure would be 50% of the design pressure. So 50% of 60 would be 30 bar gauge. So we need to depressurize from 60 bar gauge to 30 bar gauge in 15 minutes. So let us open uh, uh, second case. This is again same fire case, but we are going to use the new API uh, criteria. All right. So we are going to go ahead with the same composition, right? Same temperature, pressure. All right. So in this case, the only change that I have done is the run control. In run control, instead of 6.9 bar gauge, now the number is 30 bar gauge. Okay, so once I run it, I get these results. So the blowdown run ended at 236 seconds and 30 bar gauge. And uh, the peak flow rate, of, obviously it will not change. It will be the same. MDMT would be minus 31, minus 3, so minus 34 degrees C. So let us see the results, compare the results. So final pressure would be 30 bar gauge, depressuring time 236 second. RO size I'm going to keep same for this particular case, 25 mm. And MDMT will be minus 34 degrees C. Right? Now, if you notice, it is 236 depressuring time. Meaning, if I do something with the RO size, reduction of the RO size, then the depression in time would increase, but hopefully it should not touch uh, 900 seconds or cross 900 seconds because we want to reduce this peak flow rate because we don't want more than 5,000. Right? So that is where uh, the next case would come. In the next case, what I have done? The restriction orifice size is now 15 mm. So let me open that file. Okay, so you notice that it is still same material stream, composition, flow rate temperature. Okay, there is no change in that. In the blowdown analysis, it has been same as case two. Okay, but what I have changed now, the restriction orifice is no longer 25 mm, it is now 15 mm. And once I run it, it tells me that at 695 seconds, I'm getting 30 bar gauge pressure. 
and what is the flow rate peak flow rate it is 4740 kg per hour so if you see this and the mdmt is minus 26 minus 3 so minus 29 degree c and then peak flow rate is 4740 so this is a good news because the existing flare header cannot handle the new flow rate more than 5000 so you are getting less than that right so it will satisfy the All right, so peak flow rate would be 4740 kg per hour, less than 5000. So this is what we needed. So this proposal will be acceptable to the client, right? All right, so let us move to the next adiabatic case. So what exactly we do in adiabatic case? Initial pressure would be PAHH. Now let us assume that for this case it is 56 bar gauge. Final pressure would be zero bar gauge. Assuming we are sending it to the uh, atmosphere finally. Um, then vessel dimensions are same. And RO sizing criteria is to reduce the equipment pressure to atmospheric pressure. Okay, and then for that we are not in a hurry. Okay, if you take a couple of hours, then it is also fine. MDMT again same, inner wall temperature minus 3 degrees C. All right. So now if you see the composition, I have not changed. Pressure from 60 bar gauge, it is now 56 bar gauge. And then temperature at type 14.51. All right. So what changes I have, I have done, let us see that. The equipment conditions upstream. So instead of 60, now it is 56. In fire zone, this was checked before. Now it is not checked. There is no change in the geometry. Initial conditions, there is no change. Tailpipe is still 4 inch. Orifice, I'm keeping 15 mm. Okay, now let's go to the run control. Run control. Uh, the pressure, I am putting 0 bar gauge and uh, the end time, so I am keeping, I believe 24 hours I kept, but it will get depressurized in probably 3 hours. All right, so we go to the result summary after running the blowdown, go to major findings. Yeah, it says blow down run ended at 10,000 seconds and final pressure was 0 0.01. Maximum flow rate is 4413. And then minimum wall temperature is minus 27, minus 3, then it will be um, minus 30 would be the MDMT. So let us recap. Final pressure was 0 bar gauge. Depressuring time about 3 hours. RO size 15 mm, tailpipe size 100, MDMT minus 30 degree C, and then peak flow 4413 kg per hour. Um, so this is how we do the uh, depressurization using blowdown utility. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, any queries, you can write your comments. All right, thank you.